Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K November 2020 1v1 tournament. And we are into the tiebreaker. I don't know if there's a bracket for this, but we have Golda versus Anir as the first tiebreak match. And I guess the winner of that plays Dregs. Oh. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, Anir and Gota are playing for at least third place, and then they will fight Dregs afterwards in order to get second place. Mana 12 has gotten first place. Wait. Are we doing- are we doing this? Are we doing this? Sorry, I- That's not like a casting channel. All right, go to Indregs. Up and getting ready. So we are going to have possible co-casting. This is Google Frog. Near and Golda on Cobalt Dream of all maps. And that is ah, hey Google Frog, how's it going? You better channel code live. Well, you have to not tell everybody. <laughs> anyway, so. we're getting started. Hey, uh, wait, Mana Twelve. Oh, Mana Twelve's here too. Hello. We're just gonna be a. It's gonna be a thing. We're having all the top players come in here. All right. So starting out, we have an ear on hovercraft, Gota on tanks, and I have not seen any other matchup on this map, to be honest. I mean, there was Rover versus tanks, but it's. Kind of the same thing. I mean, any thoughts, Google or Manu? Hello? Hi. Uh, Manu's here too. Yes, he is. That's why I threw to you. Yeah. Um, I think I never saw God to play anything else besides tanks on this map. Like, Kodachi is just so strong. And the main problem that the Hovers have on this map is that. If you micro the Kotachis really carefully, you can actually um, outrange the Bolas, which are the main counter to them. Right. Yeah, it's a tricky thing, though, because it entirely depends on the the speed of the Kotachi projectile. Granted, this first one is not having a good day, but it might uh, still do some damage. Ooh, and it has is. no turrets, though. You need at least one turret against a Kotachi, surely. Man, they're playing very... Yeah, they're playing very dangerously. And they've already lost two metal extractors as a result. Gorda expanding a little more slowly, though. Doesn't even have a constructor. Just going hard on this rush. Yeah. Tiny attention focus fail from Gorda losing that one Kodachi. Now, that's a pretty big loss at this stage in the game, considering that a near... I mean, they rebuild the metal extractors. They're kind of back up. Granted, they're also going to lose more metal extractors and more wind generators. The bullets around the back. Well, there's the micro oh, attempt to get them. rid it's of it. It's pretty effective. Oh, yeah, there it is. Could actually be able to get rid of one, one metal extractor and one wind generator. And that is going to be that. Gold, on the other hand, still kind of expanding in the meantime. I don't know. I'm thinking... Like... Is it just me, or is Gota really just trying to rush into death? We saw a good micro there, Man, I told you we were talking about it before. But it kind of yeah. feels like Anir is just getting metal donations more and more at this stage. I think God is only really going for it because there's just so few turrets. He feels like he can force 
an ear to make bolus or turrets and if he hasn't respected the kadachi yet then keep making it kadachi that's a fair point yeah I, it's just that the bolus actually the bolus aren't really making cost even that's a very yeah oof i'm actually a little surprised that we aren't seeing turrets come up but on the other hand there's only one builder right now like a near is falling so far behind they do have one oh that's one bolus desperately trying to get something in here it is not gonna get anything in the north side of the map so i don't really i don't know never mind you know what you guys He's are building right up rex in his base okay it's true near is building up rex in their base but they don't have any workers to work on them are, are there any no no quill okay two quills are being emergency built just to get rid of some of these wrecks and Maybe get their economy back on track, but Golda now six metal per second ahead, getting a decent amount of map control. And near finally having enough bolus to actually stop the Kodachis. No switch yet. He may have stabilized. Yeah, I think I like think so. Bolus. They're going to hurt. But They're Golda has hurt been hurt. expanding a lot, and has been what? making his uh, lotuses just to Although, respect the counter push. Yeah, that being said, though, Lotuses will slow it down, but they're, a Lotus is not going to stop three Boluses. So it's it's no, useful. But three but will. That's true, three in a row. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely God slow it down enough. to lose two mexes. That's true. He's quite Although, fine with that. Less, less so now, and you're getting their expansions back up, getting rebuilt. Quills, obviously setting up the reclaim as well. So there's an increasing amount of stability from Anir, and Gorda... Uh, still managing to defend reasonably well. These bolses cannot counter push too hard. Just looking at Anir's economy, though, they are now four metal ahead. I mean, thanks largely to reclaim, but there is plenty of reclaim there. All right, will be a good two or three minutes before they're out of that. At any rate, it is an interesting style for sure. Yes. Yes, it is. And that's something which... Which is kind of... Well, I think for a near, it's kind of paying off, ultimately. We're seeing what I don't know was the last push from Kodachi. Actually, oh, never mind. Gorda. They're expanding on the left side, so this Kodachi push is way stronger than it looks. I mean, a near, they've lost a few boluses, but also... The fact that Gorda has taken the eastern side of the map... Or western, rather, side of the map... That means there is an economic backing to the Kodachis. Actually, it looks like, is Gota trying to do a... I feel like they're trying to do a crescent around the southwest side of the map in order to then have this nice, straight, clean path into a nearest base. What Gota is actually doing is now building tons of constructors, flooding the entire map with floaters, turrets, and then switching into artillery. That's what uh, he usually does with tanks. That's a good strategy. Emissaries are amazing, so... No reason not to use them. However, whether or not that comes through, I mean, Anir definitely working to stop that. They have... They've gotten rid of one of the Lotuses, at least, but that's not really enough. That's... Yeah, Gota still has their nice line. If Anir can at least hold out the Kodachis, there might be a chance, but Gota's getting ahead economically. They're really containing as well. Like, Anir kind of has a chance to get two or three metal extractors, but I don't see much more than that. Yeah, he lacks a way of efficiently breaking down lotuses. I guess he could make some halberds if he really thinks that could work. That would be probably the that'd be the first choice, I would think. I mean, lances would be but too expensive. So specialized. But yeah, that's that's the thing. Although I think halberds might actually not be a bad idea just for tanking Kodachi as well, just to give bolus a bit more breathing room. True, it is the secret third raider of the uh, hover factory. Yeah. Although, Anir with two pads coming in here. Are they just going to go for, like... They're going for mass something. They must be. I want to say mass bolus, but bolus isn't that cheap. I mean, it'll be 20 seconds per. It looks oh, like it is. dagger is in. Oh, no, bolus. Okay. No, mass bolus. Oh, I see. They have 40 metal per second going into this entirely, so yeah. 
Well, pads are cheaper than everything else. Oh yeah, but they don't have. They still have ten build power. Like the bolas are still going to take you know nineteen seconds divided by two when they have the caretakers. Yes. Yeah, we are indeed seeing mass bolas. Like just and you're tripling down on the boluses. Quite literally, actually, with three factories, with three factory plates taking on those bolus production duties. And I, I don't see it. I mean, the boluses are starting to run into a brick wall of lotuses. I mean, yeah, like I said, one lotus isn't too bad, but you know, like you said, three or four, well, all at once, that lotus, that lotus is absolutely worth it. The mace is trying to come in here for extra damage. Not gonna help too much, and there's nothing like scalpels. Or lances or anything else is like heavy artillery from the back. That being said, the bolses aren't doing a terrible job. They are, however, running interference for the maces, which I don't see as working super well. And given the health of both unit types, it's kind of backwards. But it's actually pushing back going a little bit. I think we're in a bit of an attrition war. However, the southwest is what matters. Anir knows it, and they're going for that, looking to take out the commander. Lotus is, however, providing a lot of defense. The commander is taking a decent chunk of damage, but even if Gold loses their commander, they've already basically forged a path into Anir's base, and Anir doesn't... Do they have quite firepower to take out the commander? No, they do not! Oh, uh, oh! So close. That, I think, is Anir's last stand. Yeah, he lost a lot of things there for nothing in the end. Uh, I mean, even if they killed the commander, it's still there's a path, but at least it wouldn't have been rebuilt if it got raided out, but now Anir just has... They got nothing in the front lines. Desperately trying to rebuild, but their economy is in shambles, and Gorda has three-quarters of the map. Killing the commander would have been pretty great, because there's no constructors over that side for Gorda. Yes. So his expansion yeah. and every, his entire toehold there would be broken. It, it would certainly be compromised. It's just that it would still be... It would still exist. Oh, that's true. No, it would be... No, you're right, because unless Anir was desperate to get those three metal extractors... They could just ignore it. Because right now they can't ignore it. Gota can just continue pushing with their commander. But Exactly. Yeah, that is that is very true. Not sure if it would be worth four boluses and losing the front line. Or the north fight. But Anir certainly would be on less of a back foot if that were the case. Well, it looks like Gota is... I mean, is there anything you guys can think of that Gota could... Or that Anir could do to pull back in this, because I am struggling to think of something. At Especially this the commander. Point, I think yeah. the there is no room for him anymore. The entire map is flooded with lotus turrets, and God is crawling around with his seven constructors and slowly pushing in the base. Like he has the entire the reclaim now. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! Yeah, he's got thousands of metal worth of reclaim here. Just look at. Oops. Look at just this. It's like, would you do what I want you to? Yeah, four thousand metal of reclaim. Yeah, two thousand at the top. Two thousand at the top, but then in the what was no man's land, another two thousand. Gorda has all. Gorda has basically everything a near would need to come back. And is taking I advantage think you need of it. To raid too. with halberds. I agree. They're I... expensive, but a few halberds can just run in and kill Lotus, and. They can, you know, they can't do anything against Kadachi, but Kadachi can't exactly kill them quickly when they're closed. No, like I said, you can you use them as a lot of units. Yeah, you can use them to screen for the boluses. So the Kadachis try to hit yeah, the halberds. I don't think you'd use them in the same area. You'd send halberds off to one side of the map, and it'd either have to lose oh, these turrets yeah. or that's true. Send Kadachi over there, and then the bolus can do something else. And if he builds up a number, then he can just snipe a commander with them. Right. Yeah, once you get half a dozen or so, the commander's basically done. Well, that was certainly that. I must say, Anir performed quite well throughout the tournament, or at least what I saw of it. Just this last match, like you said, Halberds, it's always the one unit. Like, Yogstoth for getting archers, Anir for getting Halberds, a lot of well, people for getting plates. Well, Halberds are quite awkward. It's, <laughs> it is. It's, it's true. I mean, Hovercraft as a factory is quite awkward. Bolus is about the only straightforward unit they have. So it's not surprising we saw Mass Bolus. Uh, you could get a bunch of dagger. If you get enough dagger to pop a Lotus immediately, 
know, that is still kind of basket. yeah, but that is still kind of awkward because it's all threshold scaling. Like it's yes. it's almost useless until it becomes broken. Like Father until it is very one much shots. a finesse factory. Yeah, You're not going to find simple value. No, and I'm surprised Gordo wasn't playing hovercraft, considering how strong of a hovercraft player he was or has been. But it looks like tanks on this map just are the way to go. I, I think maybe like, it's quite players. a dense metal map. It is, and that, that is super good for tanks. It. That is that is exactly what tanks want. Uh, Randy asks if we would have too many cooks if he joined us. No. Mm. I don't Not think really. so, because I have to leave now. All right, well, thank you for joining us, Man in 12. And we'll be moving on to the, I believe, the last tiebreaker match, which will be between Dregs and Gorda. I'm not sure where that map is. Is it in this room? I think there's a new room. No. It is in a Maybe. new room. No, it's a brand new room. Okay. So it is. Bye. Say, Man of 12. Thanks for joining. See you. All right. So we are just waiting on. What maps are even available here? Scary Lion, Sparkles, and Mech. Oh, okay. I think they are just cycling. If they would, then that would make As sense. In this is like, this is like round eight. Yeah. I could, uh, yep. I I get you. Mech is banned. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, we're on Sparkles Reef. We're on C finals. Or C second yeah, place. Finals, whatever. <laughs> hey, I think Dregs has a bit more of an idea hey, about Randy. how to play this. I think so too. I mean, Dregs did. Dregs made this map, right? This wasn't one of Aquanims. But he also made all three of these maps. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Mech and Sonia is more of... previous max. Yeah, Scaryland and Mech and Sonia are basically just updates to existing maps. Though I really like Scaryland. It's got a really, it's just interesting design, especially developing off Fairyland, which is already a really strong design. The middle felt weird to me when I played it. Sort of more open and, and necessary than it is on Fairyland. Yeah, I can see that. You don't have that ridge like it's, in the like center. Like it's harder to push down into the sides. So you should sort of fight in the middle. Yeah, I kind of noticed a bit of almost a laney feel to it a little bit, but not super strongly. It's like there's one giant central lane. But, you know, there are sides to it. It does work, as in the middle isn't just the middle. Yeah, I just find that, in my experience with Fairyland, other than sneaky expansions and raids over to the corners, it doesn't really come up. So Scaryland, I didn't notice that big of a difference. The only thing is that it's a little harder to hold the center in the same way because you can't just set up on the ridge and have the high ground. But that is not the map we're on. The map we're on is Sparkles Reef, an original map, a sea map, and a kind of interesting looking sea map, actually. Is Dregs making ships? Yeah, Dregs is actually on on water making ships. I know, it's a novel concept to use ships to navigate through water. Gota, however, being much more conventional and going for amphibious robots instead. This was well, Dregs' choice? Yeah, this was Dregs' choice. Gota banned mech. Mm -hmm. Mech and Antonia was banned out. Ships were buffed a few weeks ago, in part because of this map and in part because of the amphibious bots getting more tools, so ships need a bit more power to deal with it. I'm very excited to see that, actually, because it's just, we don't see a lot of sea, because, again, the balance is kind of awkward, so I'd be really excited to see if this has been better sorted out. And, oh, right, Hunter got a new model. I don't think I've shown this on stream yet. Yeah. I thought people decided that this was an AMF map, and it sort of looks like it. It's so closed in. There's these islands which AMF can walk up onto where a ship has to go around. And this is the two opposing lobes of the map. Uh, right. Where the fighting is going to happen, and AMF is just so favored, you'd feel, when there's an island right in the middle. I mean, And then there's these little choke points yeah, that blocked that's... with a single archer. Mm. That is true. Or a single urchin. But at the same time, they can also be pushed through with a single siren, or you get in, you know, a few sea wolves, and there's not much you can do about that if they're already there. 
So it kind of goes both True. ways. But I feel like Shift really wants to use its speedy light boats to, you know, run circles around the other players. And most C maps are much more open. That's true. You know, especially in teams, but one v one in small teams as well. Drex kept it a secret as long as he could that he was C hiding his units until the last moment. Yeah, behind that little cliff. Yeah, very clever there. I like that. I wasn't 100 sure what they were doing there, but the, given that you no know, hunters do counter amp bots, or at least make it make duck's lives difficult that was a smart move now golda in response to that looks to be switching to archers pretty heavily yeah i think archers are pretty good against hunters they have the Hunts? range they float Honestly, up and they have a decent amount of health hunt archers are kind of just the thing i'm, I'm surprised we don't see more players in this tournament just going mass archers which doesn't a lot of mass ducks which i suppose is good for intra like factory balance but just fi i find it weird considering that you know archers have been such a strong unit i'm not sure they were nerfed a bit on cost and that's true. ducks seem to coexist with them even then that's a fair point that is a fair point i just see i was seeing situations throughout the tournament where I thought you know archer or two here would do a really good job but yeah. we weren't actually seeing that I think Dregs has picked this map as a bit of a wild card pick. Because mm. he knows God is going to be strong on a lot of maps. And I think God is not a big fan of C, so probably doesn't have as much practice as he does on the other maps. I mean, judging by the Ampox, I can himself made agree. this map. You say that. So he should have You been say knowledge. that. But I remember when Prestige first came out, and Dregs and God played, I casted a match between them, and God just utterly dominated the map. And I thought, Dregs, you, you made this map. It's like, yeah, like you... Because Prestige, of course, you have all the cliffs along the side, and Goda was just abusing spiders on the cliffs. And until up until the last few minutes of the game, Dregs basically wasn't going along the sides. He wasn't actually sending his units up the ramps to the mm. side cliffs. And I was like, what? But it does seem like Dregs has a much better idea of how to play this map, or at least has a much better idea of how to hold the center for the time being. He still isn't quite ahead. Look at this duck over here. It killed three metal extractors just because it can go on the land and this, you can't really chase oh, it Oh, that's true. Ships can deal with it. They've put a lotus down, but it's quite awkward. Well, hunters can't. Like, ships can, yeah. A Corsair or a... I think a Cutter, even, could deal with it, but not Hunter. So we'll have to see if God is aware of Siren. Well, judging by his picks in the factory, he hasn't changed his composition. He is retreating, though, so I think he's aware that that exists. I mean, yes. aware of how it works. It's oh, the new it setup. A bit of a, yeah, a bit of a skirmisher type unit that would not quite a skirmisher, but it would outrange some of the amp units and yeah, its missile. Range, this its one. missile would outrange surface units, and then the sonic sonic thing was all close. Or even the sonic would slightly. So oh, it would that's outrange. true. Yeah. Floating archers. Whereas well, now he's got missiles. much shorter range, but it's got right. the health to really fight units, which it forces to surface. Because it's the only other unit, well, the only other surface unit that forces amps to surface. Right. So it's basically a swimming jack. Sort of. We'll see if this many archers beat her, though, because it's quite a few. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that was. Oh, dear. That was a thousand metal worth of archers, and they didn't take out half of its HP. Although it still has to retreat. True. That's what I reclaim. Yeah, that, that's donation. I mean, not really boys donation. Are lot, boys are a lot better against it now because they float and then slow it down. Slow is quite good right. against heavy units. Yeah, because then it can't fire a sonic beam as much and then it can't deal as much damage. And so it just isn't as effective. He's got Gutter typing, though. <laughs> yeah. So is the uh, first step in beating Gutter. <laughs> yeah. Step yes. one, make God ang go to angry. Step two, make them type. Then you know they're angry. Which I mean, I shouldn't talk. I'm in it. I I tend to get really pissed off playing this game too sometimes, but a lot of the time. Actually, it's the entire reason I don't stream myself playing this game. But I, still, <laughs> it's, it's step one. I can tell you from experience. Step one, make them angry. Is how it works. Works against me. Got the lobster coming in. So, try and do something with that. I think if he's going so hard on Siren, 
mass boy and a few bulkheads should work. Oh yeah, right. But I haven't seen a single bulkhead built, and I haven't seen a lot of situations where bulkheads would be useful. Uh, there's two here. There are two already. Oh good! Yay! Awesome, there are indeed two bulkheads. Alright. Some new units and, and bulkhead getting pushed around like nothing because water water is not a very solid surface. Well the boys coming in here actually are doing a decent job producing DPS, giving the archers a lot more time to move in, as you were saying, Google Frog. That is absolutely useful. There it goes. Boys taking out the sir sirens. Not quite for cost, but hey, all that metal is inside of Gola's territory. There's two more sirens on the way, though. There are dregs, however, is behind economically. They are headed by attrition, but... but Gola is know. just making arches. Not really what you want against sirens. No, they do have... Although he has ravens. switched to air, and maybe he just wants to use ravens to kill them. That's a lot or of... Or at least ten ravens off per. once they retreat. Yeah, that's that's nine or ten ravens per, depending on how strong their missiles are. So that's dangerous. Could work. I did look up, but God has played this map four times, three times against Dregs. Oh, he managed to win two out of those three. Oh. Well, I mean, given this Golda, I suppose Dregs figured this is their best chance, despite all that. Yeah, he may think a one in three chance is his best chance. Not so a bad chance to get Golda. Two and a half thousand of Siren against one and a half thousand of units, which are pretty bad against Siren. Yep. And the Ravens. Which are not uh, doing too bad against Sirens. So Give some time to retreat. Although. I don't know, it's yeah, one down. That good. Yeah, it was uh, one down for no cost. Ravens. <laughs> you don't. You don't die in front of you. You do not retreat from ravens. They they will always find you. But you might kill them first. Oof. All right. So dregs with again four sirens, a few sea wolves. I guess you were talking about the mobility Google Frog before, but I suppose with sirens it just doesn't matter. Yeah, sirens are the same way of saying you don't want mobility. But you don't care, because so. the map is not benefiting you in that way. The ships have useful anti air now. I, well, uh, I, I think, think so. Better. Thresher? Yeah, I thought yeah, the Thresher got buffed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was a buff, but I don't see any of it built. Well... Uh, he's starting at one now. Yeah, oh, yeah honestly, I'm, I'm surprised Dregs hasn't built a plate at this point. Although, I guess they're not building units that quickly. Actually, I'm surprised they haven't built more caretakers as well. With the amount of metal they have coming in, they could easily build a plate, a couple, another caretaker or two, and then just have the this twice. This commander might be going down, actually. That commander's dead. There's nothing. No, the archers are going to get One it. One more bomber should do it. Yeah, the commander cannot go underwater. Oh, what? It can? That can't be right. I thought bombers could hit commander underwater. Can go underwater. I thought bombers could hit underwater, though. Yeah, but they yeah. don't have sonar. They can't see it. Oh, right. I forgot they got changed. Although the owl's well, there now, so there. Now. Yeah. <laughs> the owl has sonar. Yep, and with that, but the commander's down. God Still. is being pressured on his um, island. He's covered in lotus. Mm hmm. Pressured by sirens, too, so it's not going to be taken out very quickly. Still Commander northwest. trade if he doesn't watch. Well, it's. It is? Actually, Commander trade if they do watch. It's kind of hard to get in. Yeah, here. I don't quite have the range. Well, the destroyer missiles have the range. But do they yes, even care? Yes, they can deal with the Lotus. See, I'm more thinking in the Northwest. I mean, you have all this economy being torn apart in the Northwest. The entire Western side of the map is now No Man's Land and probably Golda's, really. Dreg's kind of taking the Southeast in return, but Golda's commander's right there and it isn't much worse for the wear, honestly. So unless unless Dregs can turn that attack of sirens into a main base assault, I don't see that really coming out and being useful. Now, the commander's just too far out of range to really be taken out. Although it looks like nope, never mind. Dregs going for the commander. Anyway, yeah, center of the map. Seem decent against the planes. 
That's decent, not great, but, but the sheer number of planes is making that not so... Oh, boy, that's not working out. I think those two Zephyr killed... What? Five Ravens? 300 to 400. Yeah, they've two been Zephyrs. halved. Yeah, okay. That's actually a pretty good value, then. It's not ideal for the specific situation, but, you know, a couple more Zephyrs would have done it. They get overwhelmed, though. He might want to switch to a to hovercraft or something. Yeah, it, it drags, you mean? Uh, yeah. Or... Just get a few more options to be able to yeah. do the land. Honestly, I think just get hovercraft or claymore. Just wipe out all so these, these archers. <laughs> these ravens can't kill everything. That's true. It's kind I think of a shame. Brock got it back into the game, though. Oh, they have, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Bit of a shame that the Threshers weren't alongside the Sirens, though. That would have been enough to take care of the Ravens, because the Ravens, what could they do? They'd go for the Threshers and get hit by the Sirens, and then the Sirens go through unimpeded. Or the Sirens get hit, and the Threshers kill off all of the Ravens. Still, though, the Seawolves are a bigger problem. Nothing really taking them out. No sonar yeah, available. Where is the position. Owl? Yeah, the Owl's over the north it's side of the map. Way in the north. So the sea wolves are just wiped up. Oh, no. There's okay, there's one still there. No urchins either, surprisingly enough. Nothing to stop this. Here comes the owl. That's true. The owl's here. The ravens come in. Not really a successful assault, unfortunately. Yeah, that goes down. Okay. That was a somewhat successful assault. That at least slowed down it the bombers. down the ravens significantly. It does. That actually is a huge opening. As you were saying, Randy, that the ravens put go to back in the game and I think that loss of the air pad might have just put drags back in a position to reclaim this reclaim it I mean go to lost the southeast side of the map they still have their commander there but they've lost a lot of the economy position they had drags has been able to rebuild over the northwest or really start to reclaim it and losing that air pad means that the ravens are essentially no a non-issue until another one is built And we're seeing an envoy come in, I guess, in response to that. No longer has to worry about being bombed out. So just go in, take out the Lotus Islands. If you can open that up. I mean, if, if Drex could open that up, that's the eastern side of the map to Drex. And I think that would basically seal the deal. That's mm. a decent navy. That is absolutely... De I like that navy. That's a good navy. Sorry, did I say Thresher? I meant Zephyr. Thresher's a different unit. Thresher is the cobra that's... The cobra on a stick. On a stick. Yes. Static yeah. on. Yeah, as opposed to on legs. Or wheels. Why is he sending unreloaded wavens? Well... Just trying to deal with some attrition. No, he's yeah. Say, back up. Get rid of a few sirens. Oh yeah, the airpad is back up. Oh yes, and pretty new airpad. That is pretty. That's some cool texture work. All right, I like it. I think this uh, minute or so without the airpad has allowed Dregs to stabilize. He's now Absolutely. got anti-air at the north and in his base, so he can keep all the anti-air, his mobile anti-air with his army. So it's going to be a lot harder for Goda to push it back. And with that, Gota is now just not really able to do much. They got their air pad back, but again, like you said, the Zephyrs are up, so... Well, I guess there's only still only two Zephyrs. Eight Ravens could be enough. But if he takes out the Zephyrs, it's slow. As in, this can definitely kill them. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But Stand that was the a whole pens. reload run to kill yep. something that only costs one raven. That's true. And it is two cycles to reload because there's only one air pad. The archers are completely out of position for a space right now. Well, I got thrown back into a reasonable position but still out of position. The seawolves again coming in here. Is there radar? There is no radar. And the air pad's going to go down again. Yeah, it doesn't have anything. Okay. Oh, he's got I... duck. Ducks have sonar. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. Units and C units. 
the one thing to partially save it, but that's still that was still enough of a distraction that allowed the sirens to get into position. And now it's just that front line contain. And now the northwest has been opened up as well. Dregs can retake it at their leisure. Also, look at the economy. Gorda at 23 converted dregs at 40, and Gorda just doesn't really have the production capacity either to. Well, they do have the production capacity to burn their metal, but it's still. They can't really reclaim oh, usefully. Sorry, the boys over the hills worked, I think. He's trying to get them to land on top of the bridge. But I yeah, don't think I it's think path of those that they're sliding down. No, yeah, you're. But still, throwing boys in to. Yeah. No, there's there's the there is a single pathable point, like where is the? Oh, oh he's found the commander. There is a single pathable we're about point to get the right route. here. That's the only pathable area. So apart from that, there's nothing. And it looks like oh, there's a sea wolf in the southeast. Oh, yeah, there's the rage. There's the golden raid. <laughs> this is dregs. Dregs just popping off after seeing the Gota Rage. I wonder if Gota has that on a macro now. Oh, right. Wait, the patch? Okay. Like... The patch was. This one's. But the patch, the most recent patch was just. All it did was nerf Venom, didn't it? Yeah, Venom slightly. Like, the rest of these changes were well well in advance of the tournament. Like, the yeah, bulkhead was two weeks ago. Weird, uh, Siren. Yeah, which was two or three weeks ago. Uh, There's been plenty of time. that long ago. Nine days. Nine days? Okay, almost two weeks. Still, it's with it's more than a week from the tournament. Yep. Well, at any rate... Gorda did rage. Dregs has taken most of the map, and that is looking like a towel throw. And this towel's in chat, I guess. Well. Yeah, he's got to trust him boy more. I think Amph could come back on this map into the meta, but it'll involve more boy, not just Archer. I would like to see if bulkheads could be useful in this situation, though. Oh yeah, like, bulkhead too. I think too. they have a. Yeah, I think that they, there's room for that. They can easily hit sirens and large ships and things. Yeah, that's that's the thing, and that's that was kind of what you needed because dregs just dregs basically put all of their metal into sirens and a few support units. Like that was yeah, it. Not quite. He did some good raiding. He actually found a way to raid in this. Oh, that's true. The map. That's true. Yeah, the sea wolves Se did a lot of damage when they got in. And the earlier hunters. I think the earlier hunters really set the pace in the match. After that, Gold was kind yep. of on the back foot up till the ravens, and then once the sea wolf raid came in, that got rid of the first air pad. Then they once again, barely even for a long time. They were. They really were. That was. It's a well-played match on both sides, but as it stands, Dregs takes it. Second place. That is a fine step in chat. My bet was on was on the map. They complain about the map, not the game. But anyway, Dregs, congratulations, you got second place. Mana 12, of course, got first place, though. I forgot to congratulate them when they were in chat. When they were with us in voice. Oh, well. Congratulations to Manu12 for getting first place. Congratulations to Dregs to getting second. Gota for getting third. Anir for fourth place, getting into the final and final elimination tiebreakers. And otherwise, thank you all of you, all 32 of you, or I guess the remaining 28 of you, for signing up for this tournament. Like This is the biggest tournament we have had since I've started casting this game. So, for seven and a half years. Like, this is... Yeah, probably. The, I think the only tournament that was larger was a double elimination tournament that stalled a year before I started casting. Like, in 2012. So, this They've had is, large team tournaments with large numbers of teams, uh, but think, not as many sort of participants. Not as many yes, individuals. I think the largest team tournament was 
11 or 12 players, which would be about the same number of We've physical We've had 2v2. People. No, I mean, I think those... Was there 3v2? Yeah, there were 2v2. No, I think the most has been 11 or 12 teams, in which case that would be 24-ish. Okay. So, yeah, with the like, biggest tournament ever, thank you so much for participating. This was a really great... I don't know if it's going to be a cap off to the year. We might have another one next month, but... Man, I'm just so glad so many people participated. And honestly, I was really impressed. So many people I haven't had a chance to cast yet doing remarkably well against veterans and just in general. So thank you all so much for participating. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to Google Frog, Dying Phone, Randy, and Manu12 for co-casting. Aquanim's also in here, but he's muted himself. And that's it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a good night everyone i wasn't just gonna badge in halfway through so <laughs> yeah thanks Thank for casting you. and no worries oh yeah acronym. all right later all